quintessential quote from the book was written by Richard Wright when he said, the year I was born, 1942, will the Negro find a meaning in his humiliation, turn his slums and his sweatshops into modern cathedrals, out of which will be born a new spirit that will guide him towards freedom. All right. And so uh, I was blessed to be able to, as a community organizer, to, uh, and I see myself very much as a man child in the promised land. I see myself as an emancipator. And uh, my two main heroes are Fred Hampton and also uh, Malcolm X. Mm. I don't put Martin there because I'm not the guy to turn his cheek. We have got to get this beast off our backs in terms of creating commerce and letting our children understand our legacies mm -hmm. so they will stop killing each other over there being enraged about not knowing their own historical legacies mm -hmm. and how they fit into society. Mm -hmm. So if we're not creating a commerce, if we're not employing merchants control of commerce, if our dollars are going out outside our community, we're not building our economic foundation to sustain us long term. Right. So we have to get back to that. So when I speak to the issue, we have a defensible boundary, which is the actual boundary that black people were restricted to by legal restricted covenants up until 1948. The blessing for me was uh, I discovered historic preservation by being a good community organizer and looking at buildings that were being torn down and asking the question why they're being torn down. So they went and they were tearing down the Jordan building at 36 in state. And we were, Bobby Rush was the alderman at that point. We were trying to put a fence around the building to save it from being demolished and the building collapsed. Mm -hmm. And when it collapsed, the people from the historical society came down in a truck and started picking up the parapets and putting them on the truck. Wow. And I said to myself, something's to this beyond just what's on the surface. Mm -hmm. And it's actually how I got into heritage tourism. I came to it as a community organizer, having read the book and literally went about the business of organizing community. I had spent four years prior to that with the Coalition to Save South Shore Country Club. So we literally beat Ed Kelly to a standstill because they wanted to demolish the building. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I rebuilt the board out there three times, right? Uh, and then uh, I started working on Brownsville. And, and in Brownsville, we saved the 8th President Army building, the Supreme Life Insurance Company building, which I was intricately involved in, the Overton building, Chicago B, eight buildings and two landmarks that make up the Black Metropolis thematic district. We are now moving to make the entire area a national heritage area. And we want to celebrate our centennial in 2016. Now that centennial celebration based on the legislation we just passed in Springfield, anywhere we exist, we can do the same thing based on the legislation. So as the, the art to the deal is how can you get your elected officials to put resources there for you to develop your communities around heritage tourism as your anchor. Here's the four key piece, pieces of that. You gotta preserve the built environment. If it doesn't exist, you ain't there. Mm -hmm. Heritage tourism is the industry of culture and how do you promote and market the culture. Information technology, side violence can tell you all about that. Hospitality, training, and services. We don't know who A. Philip Randolph is and the Portland Porters. We don't have no sense of our migration. Mm -hmm. Right? And so we made this migration to the northern city. If you go downtown today, when I was 16, 17 years old, I could go downtown to bus tables and be around black men who were in their full smocks with all their pins on in the hospitality industry. My dad was in the hospitality industry. You go down there today and Hispanics have dominated the industry. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So that's how we're losing when we talk about that. And some of our people see servitude as opposed to service. Thank you. That's a critical piece. Go to Jamaica or go to any other foreign country and you'll instantly understand the difference between service and servitude. And, servitude. Right. and those, com those communities thrive off of us coming there, their young people knowing how to provide you with service, how to talk to you appropriately, how to get you to spend your, your money in their community. So for Maywood, it's the discussion of, in my, in terms of putting the infrastructure in place, the discussion is around a geographic boundary, the selection of a main street, uh, some key projects that you can identify, and the research that needs to be done to commodify the history. Mm -hmm. right?